Good morning everyone. Today is August 30th, the last Sunday in the month of August and our last uh, service for the month of August. Uh, I will be doing an abbreviated version of our regular services uh, and uh, I'd like to begin with the chanting of the Ju Se Ye. <coughs> Oh. Uh... 
Thank you very much, everyone. I'd like to ask you to please join me in Gasho. Amita Buddha welcomes those who, at the upper limit, spend their entire lives in the Nembutsu, and also those who say it but ten or three or five times. This Amita accomplishes directly with his universal vow, which is replete with compassion. The foolish being, when he thinks on Amida, is immediately brought to the attainment of birth. Once again, good morning everyone. I hope this message finds you all healthy and all safe. It is surely unprecedented times with the COVID-19 epidemic, wildfires, hurricanes, tornadoes. It certainly is a very scary, scary time. There is a saying that everyone is familiar with. If we don't know history, we are doomed to repeat it. So if history is a lesson, we have drifted further and further away, away from the lessons that it teaches us. So let's look back at the time of the Buddha, 2,500 years ago. People were angry because they felt the government wasn't doing enough to help them. People experienced jealousy between husbands and wives. Children and parents fought. There was hatred and people lashed out at others for their actions and they blamed others for their misfortunes. There was great sorrow at these events occurring around them. Poverty, thieves, murders, and those with no concern for human life. People felt helpless about the events occurring around them. Into this world the Buddha appeared and taught the way to end suffering. He could not stop the wars, he could not stop the hatred or the murders, but he taught people the way to end the suffering caused from within ourselves. He also created a way for us years later to be saved from our own self-created suffering. The Buddha created rules called Vinaya to help create a community known as a Sangha where conditions were right for eliminating those sufferings. As the years went by after the Buddha had died, within that Sangha arose jealousy, hatred, anger, and envy. A thousand five hundred years later in Kyoto, Japan, Things hadn't changed that much. There was anger at the government, which was corrupt, overtaxing the people. This caused starvation. It created anger and unrest. Bands of terrorists were killing, raping, and causing havoc everywhere. And the poor and the innocent were suffering. People lost trust in others. Hatred was felt, and not knowing where to place blame, people pointed the fingers at others and blamed each other. It was very sorrowful, and there was a sense of helplessness. Born into this era was Shinnan Shoni, who taught people the way to find peace of mind in the Buddha's vow of Nembutsu. 800 years later, things haven't changed that much. We are experiencing a distrust in government. Black lives don't seem to matter. Children are being held in cages on our southern borders. We're still embroiled in a war. Mother Nature seems angry at what we're doing to our planet. And we're suffering the results of COVID-19 pandemic. The same helplessness, anxiety, and suffering during Shakyamuni's time and Shinnan's time is being experienced by us here and now. And their teachings still apply here and now. We seek joy and peace of mind. 
and they can be found amidst the terror and sorrow and helplessness of the world. We are called foolish beings because we think and we feel and we believe that we have the power to overcome all of this in our own way, on our own. The events surrounding us now are a lesson of the difficulty of overcoming something that we cannot control. Over the many centuries since the time of Buddha and Shinnan, conditions continue as they were before. And over the centuries, millions have turned to the Nembutsu, to this teaching of salvation. And only faith in Amida Buddha and the Nembutsu can save us from a world that seems to have gone crazy. This is history's lesson for us today. I hope you will think about the Nembutsu in your life. Thank you for listening to me. Please, once again, join me in Gasho as I share with you, once again, my opening reading. Amida Buddha welcomes those who, at the upper limit, spend their entire lives in the Nembutsu, and also those who say it but ten or three or five times. This Amida accomplishes directly with his universal vow, which is replicated with compassion. The foolish being, when he thinks on Amida, is immediately brought to the attainment of birth. Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts. Thank you very much for listening today. I hope that you'll tune in to our YouTube sites uh, in two weeks when we will conduct our Watsonville Buddhist Temple Shotsuki Hoyo and Ohigan service two weeks from today, September 13th. Thank you very much. Nam Mandam Slamma Namas. Nam Mandam Slamma Namas. Nam Mandam Slamma